Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm here today to talk to you about tea. Specifically my favorite brand, Itoen. That's I-T-O-E-N. Itoen tea, well also Wegmans tea. Wegmans tea is Itoen tea. They just remarket it under, under their own name. It contains nothing but water, tea, and ascorbic acid to keep it fresh. So there's no sugar, which is what I like. And I eat a lot of tea. See the, see the tea right here? I drink piles of tea. Fresh teas like this, bags of tea, whatnot. And so I wanted to know if this was safe. Japan has had three meltdowns of late. So it's not, it's not really strange to want to know if your tea is safe if it's coming from Japan. And I've contacted Ito in and asked them directly about this. And the woman I talked to on the phone was incredibly nice and she uh, offered to give me all kinds of information and everything like that. Um, generally speaking, I'm now pretty comfortable in drinking my tea, as you can see I drink it now, because I, I did tests on my own, because I prefer to verify things myself. People can say whatever they want. I wanted to know for myself. And I will now share that information with you so you know what my tests are and, and, and so on. Uh, first off, most of the tea that I have here is probably either pre-Fukushima or it happened during the same month as Fukushima that was probably bottled during that same period of time probably beforehand. You see for example this uh, where it says Best Buy 6, 18, 12. Well most of these teas are good for um, are good for uh, 15 months. So mine is 15 months from that. You get 11 uh, you get, what is that, January, no, 4, February, I guess, is uh, uh, when that was probably a bottle, February 10th, I believe, and when is the goodbye label, it says it was produced 12-27-10, that might be correct, if PRO 12-27-10 uh, is correct, but she said that most of the t uh, teas are good for 15 months, so using that estimate, we're still looking at February, I believe. So this is probably a pre-Fukushima tea anyway. So any radioactivity I find in the tea, in fact, I was pretty well assured by her that it would be a pre-Fukushima tea, any radioactivity I find inside of this tea is probably just natural. Now you say to yourself, wait a minute, hold on, natural radioactivity in teas? Why would there be natural radioactivity in teas? Well, there's radioactivity naturally in a lot of foods. To give you an example, let me pull out my little book here, my sample book that I write my samples down in. I tested... Uh, well, I test everything. I tested Brazil nuts, a known radioactive of food. I tested them with my Geiger counter, which of course I test everything with. In one hour, I got 2,280 2, counts as a baseline. That's 38 counts per minute. That's base with nothing else going on. Then when I tested the nuts, I got 2,488 counts per minute. Or sorry, 2,488 2, counts which is 41.466 counts per minute. What that boils down to is these little guys here are 3.466 counts per minute higher in radioactivity than the background. And with this sensitive Geiger tube, this very sensitive Geiger tube and a whole one hour test, you can get a good feel for these things. Now it's important to keep that number in mind, 3.466 counts per minute, because it'll mean something to you in, a, in, in another minute when I go through what I did with the T. And of course there are lots of other things in our houses that are radioactive that we eat, like potassium salt. Here's potassium salt. You eat this stuff. You buy it at the grocery store to eat. And yet, it is obviously radioactive, yet perfectly safe. Now when I put my Geiger counter in front of my tea, I don't get anything like that. Now of course you might say, and people have brought this up before, it's hard to test a liquid because the water itself that's in the liquid is um, doing a pretty good job of blocking the radiation. I thought about that. So I did a couple things. I, I, I sun dried a sample of it that was inside of this plastic sample container and I made a film around here which I tested. I also boiled down eight ounces of this tea. In fact this very bottle here. Um, I have a fruit fly, isn't that great? And that made this syrupy looking material right here. This was the, uh, the uh, result, the absolute, totally 100% boiled and condensed down version. In fact, you would think it was part of the plastic. It's actually pretty rigid and hard. Uh, it's still, I mean, I guess you can goo it off a little bit in your fingers. 
but I tested this stuff for hours too to determine whether or not it was radioactive. And I'll tell you guys, I'll show you guys in a minute the uh, results of that. The results. All in all, and I make this simple because I'm going to put them on the information sheet. This is my uh, extended results that I came up with. I did a lot of testing all the way down with this uh, uh, with my testing equipment. I found on average that this tea in a 30 minute test was anywhere from 2.8 to 3.3 counts per minute higher than background. On the second test that I did, I found it to be not 1 but 0 0.7 so not even one count per higher more, and that was in a one hour test. Testing again, this time using this, the thick sample right here, I was able to uh, pull out all of 4.66 counts per minute greater than background. Now that's 4.66 sounds like a lot, but when you think about it, this turns out to be pre-Fukushima tea. I didn't know that when I was testing it, by the way, but it turns out to be. That's natural, and the reason it's natural is because the plants pick up things like radium and thorium and so on just out of the ground. It's very normal to find this uh, potassium is found in some in some uh, foods. Potatoes, bananas, those sorts of things all contain little bits of radioactivity. The nuts here get their radioactivity from radium and potassium. So it's normal for these things to get picked up in small amounts. It's not normal for them to be large amounts. But I'm not detecting large amounts. I'm running very, very, very long tests with this Geiger tube to figure out the answer. I'm running these things for as long as an hour or more. But here's the kicker. Here's the part that'll blow you away. Just for giggles, I tested... Let me see if I have it with me. I was going to show you folks. Did I bring it with me? I always forget to bring everything with me. Well, I tested a standard tea bag of uh, green tea because this is effectively green tea. I took on a tea bag of green tea and that's much more concentrated than what's in here. The whole dry bag. Pre- Fukushima green tea, pre-Fukushima. And I put it against the Geiger counter and ran it as well as a baseline. I found the pre-Fukushima tea to be 7.533 counts per minute more than background on average. In the second test, it was 6.334, so I mean, these are pretty close. My background on both of those times was within 1 one hundredth of a um, count per minute. So as, as you can see here, a regular, a regular tea bag of green tea turned out to be more radioactive. This is all pre-Fukushima, by the way, than the, this tea. Now, for their post-Fukushima material, as it starts showing up over here, I don't know how that's going to be, and I'll continue to test it. And I'll continue to let you guys know what I find out. But I'm starting to really think that it's going to be pretty safe, because as you can see... Um, well, you can see when you read my results, which I'll post on the website as best as I on the website and the um, on the YouTube page, and I'll post it on my website too. It, it, I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing a little tiny bit of radioactivity, a couple counts per minute more. And as for the source of it, I can't tell you if it's cesium, strontium, or just regular old thorium from the ground. I can't tell you that for sure because I don't have a scintillator, which is the next thing I'd like to test these with. But I think these are safe. I know some tea from Japan is not safe, even though there's strict export uh, uh, rules in place right now by the uh, my country, United States. We, we we test all the tea that comes into the United States before we drink it, so it doesn't matter if Japan let it out and it wasn't good enough; it still would get blocked by the USDA. But uh, um, uh, is it USDA or FDA? FDA Food and Drug. I think it's the uh, USDA. But regardless, um. Some companies are actually pretty good at testing their materials, materials regardless, and I'm going to put my money on these guys here. I think that their tea is pretty safe, and just to make sure that you all watch me do it, um, I'll put my money where my mouth is. There you go. I just drank the rest of my tea bottle, so if I'm wrong... Then I'll be on the list of people, I guess. Anyhow, I'm thinking it's pretty safe. I don't really detect any radioactivity other than basic background radiation. Nothing major. When I dry it, boil it down, which by the way is a painful thing to do to waste a whole bottle of my wonderful tea here, but when I do it, 
my samples don't come up with anything. This is the sample that was boiled down. This is the sample that was dried. They don't really come up with very much. They come up with less than a standard tet bag of tea. Well, anyhow, so that's pretty much all I had for you folks today. And I'll post the results on the site and let you see them. Um, until then, keep drinking your tea. I will keep drinking mine. Look at all the wetness that put on my little table right here. This stuff just tastes good. Mmm. God, that tastes good. Anyhow, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. And, uh, bye-bye.